Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. Governor Lamont has signed a gas tax holiday into law. It comes as gas prices, as we all know, remain painful and are predicted to get worse at points. Now this bill, now law, would suspend a 25 cent per gallon state tax starting on April 1st through the end of June. It passed unanimously in the House as well as the Senate. Lawmakers are looking at this as short term relief. So how much will you feel that relief in your pocket? We want to break it down with two veteran journalists who understand the ins and outs of business, the gas tax, and the state budget, Hearst Connecticut media columnist and associate editor Dan Haar, and the Connecticut Mirror's state budget reporter Keith Faniff. Good morning to you both. Great to be here. All right, so always good to have you on Real Story. Haven't seen you, you either of you in a while, but uh, this, is a, this can get complicated. So I figured it was a good time for both of you to come in and just explain to people what's going on here. So we have this 25 cent per gallon tax. It's a state tax that's suspended now. Will people feel relief at the pump? Dan, I want to start with you. Well, they're going to feel 25 cents worth. Every time you fill up your, your tank with 15 gallons, you will get $3.75 of tax relief that you weren't already getting, uh, we hope, assuming the system passes it along. And Keith will talk about that in a second, about the likelihood of 100% of it being passed along. But every time you do that 15 gallons, so as I described it in a column today, it's a... Uh, one sandwich every couple of times you fill up your tank. Uh, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but the average typical driver over the course of the three months will see, I'm sorry, household, typical driver will see about $30 worth of benefit, typical household, 50 or $60. Uh, that's not bad. It's certainly not going to reduce the sting of all we're seeing in cost increases and inflation. Okay, it's something, but as Dan just kind of mentioned, Keith, you know, it's about making sure that that gets passed on to the consumer, right? So what is the process exactly on how, you know, gas gets to the gas station? Well, uh, Jen, it, it's, we have, we have three basic importing sites. There's, there's Hartford, there's Rocky Hill, and there's the big one in New Haven. Um, we don't have a situation anymore where the big oil companies like Mobil will actually distribute it to your gas station. There are middlemen, the distributors, who will do that. Um, when they're bringing the gas, um, they will have a price that was set at the rack, like at New Haven Harbor. They will calculate the taxes. In other words, the gas stations really don't have any say. So we're kind of all at the mercy of what's going on with the big forces, the New York Mercantile Exchange. If the price of gas happens to be going up, you may not notice 25 cents of savings right away. If it goes down, I suppose it's possible, I wouldn't count on that, um, that you could get more. But this is by definition one of our more volatile, volatile commodities. So it's, it's really hard to say. I, I just want to point out historically, we lowered the retail gasoline tax, not as a holiday, but permanently. Um, between 1997 and 2000, we cut it from 39 cents to 25 cents. And the legislature was just peppered with complaints that people weren't seeing the increase. The other problem is um, we have different prices charged to different gas stations all across the state. Zone pricing is still an issue. So some people may notice in one community the prices are a lot better than another. They might assume it's gouging. It's not necessarily that, that that's going on. I think there are 22 zones in the state still. Is that right, Keith? I'm not sure, zones? but that's, that's about it. That was the old number. Yeah. yeah. You know, SEMA, um, who represents gas retailers, had brought up um, an issue about the gas that's already in tanks having had the tax when they filled up already. Dan, can you explain that? Yeah, they're concerned that uh, the, 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 the tax is levied by the state when the retailer takes possession of the fuel, right? So it's not, the, it's not the case that when we buy, we the consumer buy the gas, we pay the 25 cents. Well, where does that get passed along? It gets passed along when the retailer buys the fuel from the distributor. And so the problem SEMA, the um, uh, Energy Manager, uh, Merchants Association, um, is that they want to say when we've paid for taxes that are in the ground, in that fuel in the ground, we want to be made whole for that because we have to lower the tax, but we've paid the tax on that fuel. My argument is 
they're going to get it on the other end. On June 30th, they're going to fill up with tax-free gas, and on July 1st, they're going to be allowed to charge that 25 cents. It'll be very interesting to see which ones do and which ones don't on July 1st, which, by the way, is a much busier driving period of time than April 1st. Right. We should point out that the gas tax holiday is coming at a time when, you know, drivers drive, but it's really the summertime months that people want to get in their cars and really go out there. Um, Keith, you were saying th this savings legally has to be passed on to the consumer, right? The way that it, lawmakers it, wrote it? It does. It's just this is such a haphazard process. Jen, I really do wonder if this isn't going to lead to a lot of uh, complaints that are, are, that are almost of the knee-jerk variety. And I want to just go back to very quickly to Dan's point. If you think of the gas stations, when they're getting the gasoline, it's almost like they're initially fronting the gas tax money for us, as Danny said. They have to remit to the state right away, even before they sell that gas, the, the, the taxes that are owed on it. Then they get made whole when they sell the gas to us. Well, what happens on April 1st? They can't be made whole. So in theory, they want to have their supplies depleted. Well, we've got 1,150 gas stations that are all going to be clamoring for a fresh delivery on or about April 1st. I really doubt the middlemen can get the gas to everybody. Don't be surprised if there are some gas stations that just can't time it just right. Okay, maybe there could be somebody who really thought they'd have a, a, a delivery and it doesn't, and they've got a sign up that says no gas for 24 hours or no gas for 48 hours. That could happen. And then when they do, you'll see the savings. That doesn't mean somebody's pulling a fast one. That just means that uh, they couldn't get their gas delivered on time. Okay, and it's interesting because we actually have, you know, two state gas taxes in in Connecticut, right? You you actually get charged double technically. You have the excise tax, and Keith broke this down, um, and then you have the petroleum products gross receipts tax. Dan, you're kind of shaking your head a little bit. It's, I wouldn't say you get charged double. It's, it, you, you don't get it's charged tough. double. It's it's two different taxes. But and, it gets passed on I, to the consumer, correct? That's exactly right. It gets it, yes. The the first tax is the twenty five cent per gallon flat tax for gasoline, and we're retiring. We're officially retiring the word unleaded. I think in twenty twenty two, since the last unleaded fuel was sold in Connecticut, and I think seventy six. Uh, so it, it, the 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 surcharge, the the gross receipts tax, is charged at the hub that Keith described, the three locations, and that's what the distributors pay, and they pay. Uh, it, it, as a basis of the, as a percentage of the wholesale price, right? So they're paying 8.1% plus the famous surcharge that only Keith Fanoff knows how it works, but there's a <laughs> surcharge that brings it up to $8.81%. 8, 8 and, and this part I refer to him, I defer to him on. And that is up to $3 a gallon. So the long and the short of it is the maximum tax on the gross receipt side can be 26.4 cents, leading to a 51.4 cent overall tax. We are not, contrary to what the Republicans wanted to see and Bob Stefanowski running for governor wanted to see, we are not getting a break on that gross receipts tax only on the 25 cent. Just a quick add, Jen, and yes. I, I think Danny and I basically agree, but I would also agree with you, Jen. I think we are getting double tax because um, the gas station owners have that tax, that wholesale tax passed along to them by the middlemen. And the gas station owners have always testified they build every penny of that into the price we pay. So believe me, when you're filling up, you're paying that 25 cents a gallon retail tax, except for the three months during the holiday, and you're paying the 26.4 cents now as well. It's all ultimately coming out of our pockets. Yeah, I guess it's just how you word it, right? And, and technically, yes. I think, Dan, what you're saying is it's not it's not a it's double two different tax. taxes. That's right, all I'm saying. Right, exactly. Okay, so, you know, uh, Dan, you brought this up about Bob Stefanowski as well as um, Republicans wanting us to see, wanting us to make a difference with the gross receipts tax. So, why didn't lawmakers touch this? Anyone know? 
Well, the, the short answer is because the money has to come from somewhere. And even though we have surpluses this year, there's still the surpluses, even the surpluses have people have their eyes on that surplus. So the question is, what else would we rather do with that money? The governor, uh, Lamont, would rather use it for property tax relief. Uh, and, and that is in the form of income tax credits against your property taxes that he's both increasing in size and in who's available, who's eligible to get those. He's, he'd rather see that. He thinks that's a more effective tax cut or tax break. And I'll let Keith pick it up from there. Yeah, Keith, I mean, oh. this is this is a big one, right? Because it affects a, a lot of people in the state. Is that something that they can get bipartisan support on? Um, I think it would be hard for Republicans to vote against that. Um, uh, I do think because the governor had promised uh, as a candidate in 2018 that he would reduce the income tax by increasing the property tax credit, and then he did not deliver on that, I think he feels he has to do that this year. So, uh, yeah, I think that one's definite. There are a lot of Democrats, though, who do want to increase further the earned income tax credit, which is another income tax break. It's for the working poor. I also think you're going to see a lot of pressure to use some of the surplus to further pay down the debt in our unemployment trust. That was what we used to cover all the unemployment benefits during the pandemic. Businesses are still on the hook for about $460 million. They'll be assessed um, over time, but it'll begin in November unless the state wants to pay down more of that debt. So if that's effectively tax relief. I think you'll see a lot of push for that. Just to complete the goodie table, the <laughs> House Democrats would like to see a child tax credit. As you saw, as, you, as, you, as we've all reported, the federal government failed to extend the child tax credit addition. And that's uh, led Connecticut Democrats, especially on the House side, led by uh, Representative Scanlon, to push for a child tax credit. And finally, the Senate Republicans would like to see a cut in the sales tax for one year by about one third of one percentage point, uh, and the food, the prepare, the restaurant meals tax by a larger amount. So that's really all the goodies that are on the table, and the property tax cut is going to prevail. But what else does is is a question. Right, and of course, you know, we, they love talking about the tax breaks. Right now, we have a surplus, but it's also an election year, and as we know, <laughs> everything's political during an election year, right? Okay, Hearst Connecticut media columnist and associate editor Dan Haar and Connecticut Mirror's state budget reporter Keith Faneff. You both are brilliant and great with your numbers and always welcome on the program to help us sort through some of these complicated topics. Thank you. Great to be here. All right, that does it for us in The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning. Thank you.